We are now adding more color to the standard. This is the funnest part because it really brings it to life. And what I have noticed with both the dyes from Dharma, the Dynaflow or the pigment dyes, is I need to do a second coat on all the colors except for the yellow. The yellow just does really good. I wish the other ones were like that because every time you go back to your banner it's just a chance of flicking some paint or making a mistake. But the black definitely needs to go over. On, on occasion it goes out where I don't need to do a second coat but almost it's every color except the yellow, I do have to go do a second coat. Now I'm going to add the last color uh, to the banner, which is some green. The heraldry is the ore, which is gold, and the vert, which is green. And in heraldry, they do use the French words for uh, the colors. And I, I just, it makes it, it's something you have to learn, but it, Part of the SCA that makes it a little magical. You're, you're learning new words and actually the words that they used back then. So this is more of a bigger area. You can use, this is a one inch brush. I could even use a two inch because I'm in a bigger area here. But when you apply to a bigger area, start in one section and just kind of keep the flow going. Now no matter what you do, there will be like water stain, uh, little wells of where the paint gathers up. That's just the nature of what you're doing. Um, sometimes a second coat takes a lot of that out, um, but then it'll still be there, especially when you go around small objects, it tends to well up. And that's just, that's just your own, shows it's a unique piece, no two ever the same. And the other thing is you are going to make mistakes. You've got to remember what you look at right here in front of your nose is going to be like 10 feet up on a pole. So if your line isn't completely straight, it's okay. If you get a little spot here and there, it's okay. Up on the pole, it's going to look just fine. And that's just the nature of what you're doing. So we're just going to start here. And like I said, when you start adding the color, you just want to keep going. And when you're adding color near where the whip stitching is, don't go fast. I have gone fast, it flicks on the thread, and then say gets on the yellow. So you go, you kind of go slow along the hem, and it also soaks in to get to the underside. And that's the other thing, when I'm completely done, I will turn the frame over because lots of times the hem, uh, the rolled hem, doesn't get some of the dye on and you just do a little touch up on the back side. So remember when you're all done to turn the frame over uh, just to see how it looks along the edges. So you can see I'm moving right along here, trying to do one this one area. I'm not going completely to the end. I'm just trying to get this one area so there won't be streak, a lot of streak marks because it does dry. Um, I don't have my heater on in this room in the winter when I am doing large areas of the dye because um, it'll, it'll just dry too quickly. So, um, or you know, on low temperatures if you live in a real cold area. I'm here on the coast in uh, Coos Bay, Oregon, which is pretty temperate year round, about 55 degrees, a little warmer in the summer, a little cooler in the winter. But um, so you can see, I'm just kind of doing this area, moving it along, so there won't be a lot of streak marks. If I did just all along the top and then came back to do the next row, you, you'll have more, a lot of streak marks. So this is what I'll be working on now, and we'll get back with you in a little bit. We're done putting on the color, and I had to do two coats of the red, the black, and the green. The yellow in both the Dynaflow 
and the pigment dyes does not need two coats. I wish the rest were like that, but it must be the properties of the yellow. So we have, um, we have just a few things that I, uh, there's some pencil marks on here that I just ignore. The splatter gods have been kind to me. There is not one little speck of splatter. And there is no bleeding between the lines, which is usually a big problem I have. So I always put just a little bit right between colors on the hem and then kind of let it dry and then stain up to it. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Always remember when you're done to turn it over and check the hem on the other side, which I already did, and I did have to touch up along the hem. There's just some white spots where it didn't soak through. Now we're ready to take the banner off the frame. And what we've ended with, whenever you see this banner, you will know you're near somebody from the kingdom of Glen Aben, and they're a herald because of the two gold trumpets. So this, for the populous, populous badge, it's a ram climate argent with the ghouls and sable, and then the two trumpets or, and it's the vert background for green. Now we're going to take the banner off the frame. So I do the sides first. I clip the little end that was tied up. And then we just flick it off until you got to where you um, had another, here's another end. I cut that off and then start with the next and just flick it off with my finger all the way down. Now the thing you have to, this is not set yet. That's the next little part, setting the die on the banner. And my instructor told me when I got home, you put it in the dryer for 30 minutes. And that's what I did. And I, that's what I did for a year. And one time I was talking to the representatives at Dharma, and they go, what? No, no, you must iron set it. So now I do both. So I will be throwing this in the dryer for 30 minutes, and then I will show you how I iron set the banner. So I do both. Might not need to, but I, I, that's just what I do. Uh, another point on the banner, because it is not set, if you get any water drops on it, it will streak. How do I know that? Because I brought a banner home on a frame once, and I grabbed my, my mug that had water in it that I thought was completely empty. It just had some drops. Held them together as I shut the door, and it streaked the whole banner. A second coat of the pigment dyes completely took care of it. But between here and my house, today as an example, it is raining, uh, misty, rainy out. So I will be putting the banner in a plastic bag to go from here to the house to the dryer. Also, even if it is not raining and you're carrying it from, say, a, a class to your vehicle, Beware of trees that have drops or dew in it. I have a eucalyptus tree that has dropped and the oil from the eucalyptus tree has stayed on the banner. And hopefully, you, you always hope you'll be putting some color on there. A couple times there wasn't any color. So that's just something to be aware of. We are very fortunate that at the end of last year, the SCA came out with a book on the Complete Anachronist called Painted Flags of the Late Middle Ages by Shannon Miller. I highly recommend you get this. I did check. It is available online at the SCA store. It's CAD 153. It's $4.50. She even shows you how to use, how to make paint and size, which is what they would kind of use instead of uh, Gouda, they would uh, coat the material with a, an egg white, and then the color doesn't flow as you put it on. So she has a little different technique, but a lot of history on medieval painted flags. I highly recommend you to get this uh, booklet.